Hello everyone, welcome to SATIC GK quiz number 296. This video is aimed to help you with your state and central government exams like SSC, UPSC and state PSCs, also banking and insurance credit examinations like RRB, IBPS, etc. I'm with Risha from GK today and I'll be taking you through this. Which among the following is the first Indian PSU listed in NYSE on New York Stock Exchange? Correct answer is VSNL, which is Videsh Sanchar Nigam Limited. It became the first Indian public centered company to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange in August of 2000. Which among the following effects will be seen in deposit rates if RBI tightens its policy? The deposit rate will increase. So as it happens, uh, deposit rates are the rates that banks uh, pay, borrow, uh, pay their customers in order to encourage them to keep deposits. These rates are usually little less than the interest charged on loans so that banks can make profit. Similarly, RBI does the same. Which of the following committee in India had for the first time recommended the privatization and restructure of LIC? That would be Malhotra committee. So in 1993, the government set up a committee under the chairmanship of RN Malhotra, who was a former governor of RBI, to propose recommendations for reforms in the insurance sector. The objective was to complement the reforms initiated in the financial sector and this committee recommended that LIC be privatized and restructured. Which among the following definition is nearest to the gross budgetary support? So let's first hear what is the definition. Now gross budgetary support is an important component of the central plan of the government of India. The government support to the central plan is known as gross budgetary support. The uh, gross budgetary support includes tax receipts and other sources of revenue raised by the government. So this is basically whatever money uh, the government is earning via revenues, whether it's taxation or non-tax related revenues. And this is meant to support the government's plan for the next budget. So here, of course, option D is the closest. That is fraction of total expenditure of the government on different central sectors, ministries, departments and the support to state union territory plan. So basically the support given on government expenditure. Which among the following body in India takes actions against violation and irregularities in foreign currency convertible bonds. Now this is the job of the Central Bank of India which is Reserve Bank of India. Which among the following plan document has the subtitle Inclusive Growth. This is our 11th five-year plan. So what all does the 11th five-year plan have? So its duration was between 2007 and 2012 and it was prepared by C. Rangarajan. Its main theme was faster and more inclusive growth and its growth rate target was 8.1 but it achieved 7.9%. Nehru Rozgar Yojana was launched to tackle the menace of which of the following. This was to alleviate urban poverty. So this is the urban wing of another rural wing which was to alleviate rural poverty which was Sampurna Gramin Rozgar Yojana. RVS Raghavan Committee of 2002 is related to which of the following. It's related to Competition Act. So the Central Government Committee of the year 2000 was set up for advising policy guidelines on competition and co corporate governance. Now this later came to be known as SVN, uh, SVS Raghavan Committee after uh, the person who headed the committee. The term vote on account in the parliamentary terminology is used in context of the following. It's used for short expenditures of revenues. Usually an outgoing government presents only an interim budget or seeks a vote on account because the government cannot plan for the whole year because the elections usually happen in May, June time in our country. This like this time it happened in April, May. So the budget is presented in February for the upcoming year, April to next year, March. So they cannot uh, vote on everything, right? If they don't come back to power, their policies won't be implemented which is why they only use it for short-term expenditures or revenues, which have to be followed through. What was the authorized capital and paid-up capital of Nabad in 1982 when it was established? So it was set up with an initial capital of rupees 100 crores and its paid-up capital right now is 10,580 crores. So that's how much it's grown. When it did begin, the... Uh, 
uh, authorized capital was 500 crore in 1982 and 2000, uh, 200 crore for your paid up capital. That's all for today's quiz. Until the next video, goodbye.